Hello, this is Mr. Ferguson, and we're going to expand Lesson 6.5, where we're talking about Lewis structures uh, with an additional bonus section. We're going to talk about formal charge and resonance in this lesson. So we'd like to teach you to draw the resonance structures for molecules and to recognize what we mean when we say a resonance structure and also to use the concept of formal charge to determine which Lewis structure is most stable for a molecule or if there's multiple Lewis structures which one is the more common or more likely form so uh, let's get to it so what exactly is formal charge? Well it's a method for determining the best distribution of the electrons in a Lewis structure uh, and if you go on in your study of chemistry to more advanced topics, you use the formal charge a lot to help you uh, figure out the reactivity of molecules and what's going to happen in chemical bonding with molecules using the formal charge. Uh, but in, in simplest terms, the formal charge is going to be, this is formal charge, the number of valence electrons in an atom minus the unbonded electrons attached to that atom, lone pairs. So you're going to minus off uh, all of the electrons in lone pairs. And then you're going to subtract off half of the bonded electrons. And you're going to do this for each atom in the structure and write a tiny little number beside that atom to represent its formal charge. Okay, so let's do this for two different uh, molecules carbon dioxide and then sulfur dioxide so carbon dioxide we know that carbon is a central atom it's going to have an oxygen on either side of it okay and we could draw this you know we've done this enough times we know that each carbon is double bonded to each of the oxygens and each oxygen also keeps two lone pairs so what would be the formal charge on each one? Well, let's do the carbon first. So carbon has, start with the number of valence electrons, four valence electrons. We're going to minus off any unbonded ones. Well, there aren't any unbonded electrons. There are no lone pairs on carbon. Okay, minus half of the electrons involved in bonds. So let's look. Two electrons, four, six, eight. So there's eight electrons attached to that carbon through bonds. Half of eight would be four, so it's four minus zero minus four, that equals zero. So carbon's formal charge is zero. Now let's do each oxygen. Okay, they're, they're both laid out the same, so we can just do one of them. So oxygen has six valence electrons. We're going to subtract off the unbonded ones. There are one, two, three, four unbond 6 minus 4 minus half of the bonding electrons so we have 2 4 bonding electrons half of that would be 2 6 minus 4 minus 2 equals 0 so each oxygen is also going to have zero formal charge all right now let's try sulfur dioxide sulfur is our central atom oxygen on either side Okay, and in this case, sulfur has six valence electrons. Each oxygen has six. So that means we have 18 electrons to work with. Okay, so in sulfur dioxide, we're going to start by putting a pair of electrons between sulfur and each oxygen. We're going to complete the octets of each oxygen. And... Let's see if we've used them all. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. We're two electrons short, so we're going to put two more valence electrons on the sulfur. So sulfur would have a lone pair there. Now the issue is with this one, we can see, if we draw this like so, um, well let's look at formal charge. Okay, sulfur, 6 minus 2 is 4, minus 2 more is 2. Sulfur has a plus 2 formal charge. 
six valence electrons minus the two unbonded electrons minus half of the electrons involved in the bond, which would be two, so we still have the plus two. All right, let's do oxygen. Six minus six, because there's six unbonded electrons, minus one. Six minus six minus one, that gives us negative one. So each oxygen is negative one. So that adds up to zero, so sulfur dioxide we can expect to have a zero charge. However, and we didn't really cover this yet, that's on the next slide, the rule is you want to minimize the formal charge. So, and you can also see we have an issue, sulfur does not have an octet. That's a single bond, not a, looks like a double bond. So let's redraw that. Okay, I'll switch to black, so we're going to bring in a pair of electrons here like this. So now we're going to have sulfur double bonded to oxygen. Only two lone pairs left, single bonded over here to oxygen, and this oxygen will have three lone pairs. Okay, so now if we do, oxygen is going to come up with a formal charge of zero. This oxygen has a minus one. Let's check sulfur. Six minus uh, Oh, sulfur had a lone pair, sorry. Six minus two, okay. That gives us four minus three plus one. All right, so we've done a bit. We've got one of the, and this structure would be more stable than this one because one of the atoms has a zero formal charge. But I think you can see sulfur has two, four, six, eight electrons. Okay, so this would allow us to predict that this would be a more likely structure than this. And again, as we're going to see, sulfur can actually expand its octet, and so it's allowed to actually have more than eight electrons in it in order to minimize formal charge, and we'll talk about that on the next slide. So, how do you know which one's the best Lewis structure? Well, the best Lewis structure is, first of all, going to have the octet rule satisfied for all the atoms. There are some exceptions, okay? And it's going to have the lowest possible formal charge on as many atoms as possible in the structure. So if we remember with sulfur dioxide, we had it drawn, you know, this way with a single bond to each oxygen and a lone pair there. And this resulted in a minus one, a minus one, and I believe that was a plus two. And then what we'll do is we show, like, that that's, this could also be, you know, this structure, single bond here, and lone pair there. And that gave us a minus one, a zero, and, sorry, a plus one, and a zero. So that was from the previous slide. Well, using the same reasoning, why can't we bring in another pair here? And so we can have our sulfur central, okay. And lone pair. And I know what you're probably thinking. Well, we have an octet rule violation right here. Well, let's go ahead and figure out the formal charges anyway. We'll come back to that octet rule violation. So that each oxygen is going to have a zero formal charge. How do I know that? Six minus four, four unbonded electrons, one, two, three, four, minus two, that would be half the number of the electrons that are involved in that shared bond with the sulfur. That's zero. Same thing for this one over here, zero. So let's move on to uh, the sulfur, sulfur had six valence electrons as well, minus two unbonded, and it's got four total bonds, four bonds, one, two, three, four, so that's eight electrons, half of eight is four, six minus two minus four, that's zero. So this one we can see we've minimized the formal charge, that is an even better Lewis structure than either of the first two. So we would predict that this is the likely arrangement of the electrons. Now, 
the problem is sulfur has two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. You're absolutely correct. Uh, that's called an octet rule exception. We're going to deal with that on our next slide. So we do have some octet except rule exceptions, and we've already covered one of them, and that's that duet rule where tiny atoms like hydrogen are stable with only a single pair of electrons in their electron cloud. Uh, but let's go up to the other end. If we have central atoms uh, that are in n equal three or more, in other words, that, that would be the third row of the periodic table, they are actually, uh, we find that they will expand their octet in situations where it serves to minimize the formal charge, that is to, to bring the formal charge of more atoms in the molecule to zero. So let's look at, I have four different arrangements for the atoms in an SO3, that would be sulfur trioxide. So here we can have three single bonds to the sulfur, uh, one oxygen double bonded, two single bonds, two of the oxygens double bonded, and one single bond, or all three of them double bonded. And of course, using the octet rule, only this middle sulfur, only that one and the second one would actually have an octet on the central atom. But I think if you count them, you're going to find that they all have uh, 24 electrons in them. So it's kind of four different arrangements with the 24. Now if we went and did the formal charge and took a look at the formal charge here we would find that these oxygens all have a minus one when they're single bonded. So that's six valence electrons minus six unpaired electrons minus one of the bonding electrons that adds up to minus one. Okay, this, our central sulfurs uh, formal charge is going to be six minus zero unpaired minus three so that's going to be a plus three and of course plus three and the three it adds up to zero so and since this is an uncharged molecule it should add up to zero let's look at the second one well now we're going to have a minus one a minus one the oxygen when it's double bonded has a formal charge of zero 6 minus 4 minus 2 is 0. Let's look at the sulfur in the center. 6 minus 0 minus 4. That adds up to positive 2. So again, positive 2, negative 1, negative 1. Net charge 0. Um, so we're better because we have a lower formal charge here than we... So the formal charge on the sulfur here is lower than here. And we have actually uh, one of the atoms with zero formal charge. Let's look at the third instance. Okay, we have a minus one, zero, zero. Now sulfur is going to be six minus zero minus five, that it, which adds up to positive one. Positive one, negative one, zero. So this is an even more likely configuration. And the third one or the fourth one, excuse me, we have zero formal charges on all the oxygens, and it's actually going to be six minus zero minus six, which is zero. So this, you would think, would be, from a formal charge standpoint, the most likely uh, distribution of electrons, even though, even though, uh, the sulfur has taken on an extended octet. It actually has 12 electrons. It's formed three double bonds. And <clears throat> uh, but you would find that this is probably the most likely arrangement for the electrons because sulfur is in the third row, so it's allowed to expand its octet. So one final point we want to discuss are resonance structures. You can sometimes have multiple valid Lewis structures for a molecule, uh, and we call them resonance structures when these different structures or molecules arrangements are differing only in the position of the electrons. So we've got a sulfate ion here, SO4 minus two. And you can see we've drawn it with all single bonds in the first instance which gives you a uh, you know, formal charge of minus one on all of the oxygens, and then a formal charge of plus two on the sulfur. Uh, the second one, we have a double bond 
between the oxygen and the sulfur, one of the oxygens and the sulfur, the rest are single bonds. So now we notice we've reduced the formal charge to positive one on the sulfur, and then only three of the four oxygens have a minus one. This one would be a zero. So this would be a more a, a better structure. And then we get to the, to the third example. We have double bonds on the opposite sides, um, and single bonds to these oxygen, so, we, so the oxygen's top and bottom. So we have formal charge of minus one here. Everybody else has a zero formal charge. Note that sulfur has expanded its octet again, which is uh, okay. Um, but this serves to minimize the formal charge even more. So out of these three, definitely this one is gonna be the preferred uh, and probably the more likely distribution of electrons. Okay, but if you think about this now, so let's say this is this is how it's going to be. Um, we've kept the octet rule for sulfur. Uh, excuse me for the oxygens. What would be a resonance structure we could draw? Well, we could draw sulfur with the double bond up to this oxygen and the double bond down to this oxygen and single bonds over here to this oxygen single bonds over here to this oxygen and the overall thing because is going to be a net minus two charge because again now these two oxygens have minus one formal charges each so basically is it is it this one or is it this one and the answer seems to be that it's both that's a stable arrangement so it's likely to be in either one of those arrangements so we will draw it as the kind of arrows like like this this uh, seems to go back and forth between these two and when they actually look at the bond length what they find is that between any sulfur and a given oxygen the length of this bond seems to be longer than a double bond but shorter than a single bond so it's kind of like all four of those are midway between a double bond and a single bond in length so that's what we call resonance so those are equivalent structures just you know, we've distributed the electrons uh, slightly differently in each one all right, so I know this is some kind of advanced stuff, but it is helpful if you understand the idea of formal charges in dealing with these Lewis structures and kind of figuring out which one's most likely. Are they resonance structures? So there are uh, four resonance structures shown below for the phosphate ions. And I need to move something here, excuse me. I need to move this. There's actually five resonance structures, excuse me. Um, and actually four of them are resonance, and then one is it's just an alternate distribution. Um, so you're going to have to figure out which one is the most likely structure or structures out of the five based on formal charge. So what I'd like you to do is draw them and then uh, figure out the formal charge on each atom in each diagram. And of course, if you're, if you're looking carefully you're going to note that this one, this one, this one, and this one are really the same thing, just kind of turn the double bonds in a different position. So you really only have to do the formal charge of this one and this one. Um, and, and then these will follow suit off of that. So remember that formal charge is going to be valence electrons minus the unbonded electrons that are attached to that atom that says unbonded minus one half of the bonded electrons since half of those could be considered to belong to that atom so give that a try uh, see if you can figure out the formal charges and which would be the most likely structure we'll talk about it tomorrow